Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Firecast. Today, I'll go over the basics of using Google Analytics in your Kotlin Android application and maybe help settle an argument or two amongst your friends. Against wild accusations of cheating and maybe a flip table or two, I've created this dice rolling app to help play a board game with my friends. Right now, it rolls two standard dice, that is 2d6 for you cool kids out there, and outputs the result of each die as well as the total rolled. Of course, not more than 30 seconds pass before accusations move from you're not rolling correctly to the app clearly is cheating. That can't be the case. Look at this app, it's pretty simple. Two rounded rectangles display the results of each die. The little label underneath tells me the total. I also have a big old button at the bottom to simulate a roll. I have a very basic main activity class that just bridges my layout to an underlying view model. This way, there won't be any shenanigans when the user rotates their phone. I'm also using view bindings to get the relevant controls for my layout so I don't mess up my find view by ID calls and registering an on click listener for the roll button. The button click listener and my update UI function call into this dice view model. And you can see that it's just using Kotlin's random.nextint to update my die. This should be plenty random for this test, but how can I prove it? I'm going to use Google Analytics to track every role of every user of this app. I can then verify at scale that I'm seeing the distributions I'd expect for a truly random dice roll. To start, make sure you already have a Firebase project set up and configured for your application. See the link in the description below to get started. You also need to make sure you've already explicitly enabled Google Analytics. If you open up the Analytics dashboard and see Enable Google Analytics, just click on that button and associate with the Analytics account you want to use. Google Analytics accounts can be thought of as folders. If your team is already using Google Analytics, for example, to measure your website, you may already have a folder structure to follow. I'm also going to add a dependency on Firebase Analytics KTX. Firebase Analytics will work, but since I'm using Kotlin, I would like to use the KTX extensions to take advantage of some fancy Kotlin syntax that'll make my life easier when logging events. Finally, I'll go over to my dice view model and just grab an instance of Firebase Analytics with firebase.analytics. Once I do this, Google Analytics immediately goes to work gathering basic analytics from my app. I can see how many active users I have, overall revenue, and my user retention. Now that that's out of the way, I'll jump on over to my handy dandy view model and find my role function. To log an event, I'll write log event, followed by some string for the name of the event. There are a bunch of suggested events under Firebase Analytics.event, such as level up and add to cart. If your app user flow matches one of these suggestions, you should definitely use it. Since Firebase knows about them, it can do some custom visualization and reporting automatically, which is a huge win. Outside of maybe post score, I don't see anything that could possibly match rolling some dice. So I'll just make up my own event called roll. This still isn't that useful. The whole purpose of this app is to roll dice, so no players are going to roll some dice in it. To make sure that my dice are rolling fairly, I'll want to verify that the sum of the two dice converge to the average over time. You may be inclined to log an event like roll sum, such as roll seven, but the Firebase console won't really know how to visualize this in a useful manner. You also only get 500 different events per app, this technique just burned 11 of them. This isn't sustainable in the long run. Instead, I'll add what's called a parameter to the role event. Parameters are additional pieces of custom metadata that you send out with your event as a series of key value pairs. If you're still using Java, you'd have to set up a bundle and send that with your event. But thanks to the Firebase Kotlin extensions, you can use a DSL to just append parameters like this. I'll add a long parameter called sum for the sum of two dice, but parameters can be double, long, or string. 
The best part is that I get 25 unique parameters per event. So I have 24 left to go on roll. Later, when I view the roll event in the dashboard, I'll hope to see an average value of seven for the sum of all my rolls from all of my users. Another thing that literally everyone complains about is that they roll doubles too often. Or more accurately, their opponent is clearly cheating and getting all the doubles. A double will happen one out of every six rolls, so I'll add another parameter called doubles and set this to the string true if they rolled a double, or false if they didn't. I use strings rather than converting it to a zero or one, just so it's easier to read in the Firebase dashboard. So, after running my app and rolling a few times, I can see that I have one user, that'll be me, but I don't see any events coming in. What's the deal? You generally want your analytics to have as little impact as possible on your app's user experience. It really wouldn't be cool if you added analytics and immediately users' battery life tanked and their data usage went through the roof. So the Google Analytics for Firebase SDK does something clever. It will batch up your events and upload them every hour or so. This uses Google Play services when available, so these events will get uploaded even if the user uninstalls your application. Even with this delay, your event reports will only get generated every few hours or so. Once your app is in the wild, these optimizations are pretty useful, but it's a huge pain when you're debugging. I want to know sooner than tomorrow that everything's working. To continue, I need to be able to run commands using ADB. If you run into errors with this command, see this page, link in the description below. To start, I can verify that my analytics are logging correctly by entering adb shell setprop log.tag.fa verbose and fa-svc verbose to enable verbose logging of Firebase Analytics events. Then I can jump back to Android Studio and click debug. If I open my Logcat window, I can select Firebase from this dropdown box on the side. This will filter my logging output to help me view only Firebase-specific logs. Now if I roll a few times, I can see these logging event logs coming through with sum and doubles appended to the end. Also note that there are rules around event and parameter names. Generally, you're safe if you use snake case like I have, but if I were to use rollum instead of roll and monitor this output, you can see that I get a log saying event will not be logged. This is a great way to make sure my code is working locally, but it can also verify that my events are making it to the server in real time. Since my package name is com.firebase.example.diceroller, I'll open up my terminal and type adb shell setprop debug.firebase.analytics.app followed by com.firebase.example.diceroller. Now my application will be in debug mode until I enter this command again, replacing my bundle ID with .none, or I reboot my phone. Also note that in debug mode, events won't get rolled into your overall analytics data and won't get included with your BigQuery exports. This way you can experiment with event reporting without polluting your live data. So now I'll jump on over to the debug view under analytics in my Firebase dashboard, then run my app. I can see my events coming in up here. I also see doubles and sum and can expand each one to see the value sent up. The really cool thing here with debug view is that since it's a sticky setting, I can unplug my phone and continue debugging. If I'm using events to debug app behavior, I can even put a QA phone into debug mode and let a tester go wild whilst monitoring the results. Since it does take up to 24 hours for an event report to get generated, let's time travel a bit into the future. As you can see, my dashboard has been populated with some event data. I can apply filters, like I can set this to show the Android version of my app. And take note of this in the future. If I eventually port my app to iOS or the web and use the same event names and parameters, I'll be able to view all of my event data combined into one view. And if I click on my role event, I can see more details about it, like how many users have triggered this event and where in the world an event came from. 
Once you get enough users, and if you activate Google Signals, you'll also see some demographic information, but I won't cover that now. I don't see my parameters, though. While my event parameters are being sent over, the console doesn't create reports for every single event parameter. By default, only does this for a few parameters for the suggested events I mentioned earlier. Now, you can get reports generated for these event parameters, and at the time of this writing, you can do this for about 100 parameters. But you'll need to tell the console which parameters you want to see reports for. To register the sum parameter, I need to go back to my event screen and click Manage Custom Definitions. Here, you have two things you can create custom dimensions, and custom metrics. These are shared across multiple events, meaning that once I define sum, it'll appear identically in any event that has sum as a parameter. First, let's focus on custom metrics. These are parameters that describe something quantitative, such as the sum of your die rolls. So I'll click Create Custom Metric, select sum as the parameter name, and leave the unit of measurement as standard since value of a die doesn't really have a unit associated with it. This does change how the value is shown in the dashboard with standard letting me see an average of all my rolls. Doubles, on the other hand, I'm going to register as a dimension. Dimensions are used more for qualitative measurements. Typical examples include which level the player is on or the name of a purchased item. In my case, whether or not you roll doubles doesn't quite make sense as a numerical range to evaluate. I am setting up strings after all, but I will want to see how many trues I have versus falses. Unfortunately, adding dimensions and metrics to my events will not apply retroactively to my reports. So I'll have to wait another day for new events to start showing up in my analytics report with these parameters included. And here I am, a day later. Check this out. I have sum and double showing up right here in the bottom of my roll event. Right here, I see that my average is six. This should be seven. Let's go look at my code again. Aha, the dice were cheating, ish. Next in's max is exclusive, so I'm only rolling a five-sided die. Well, that's embarrassing. Let's look at my doubles now. I can divide this number next to true and divide it by the total and hope for 0.17 or 17%, but all bets are off now. I'll push the change out to my friends with an apology and make sure that my stats start to look more correct after a few more days. So thanks to Google Analytics, I found a fairly subtle bug and will be able to monitor my application's health in the future. If folks still think that my dice are cheating, I can also use these analytics to design and test additional changes. Like maybe I can add a heat map that shows the distribution of dice rolls against the expected average so players can see that their session is fair. Then I'd be able to measure how many times players open that heat map using Google Analytics to see if it was a useful addition. And that's it. With a few clicks and literally five lines of code, I can efficiently and scalably monitor the health and usage of my app. There's still plenty more that I can do, such as adding custom user properties to further categorize my event results. I can even build audiences out of users that appear to behave similarly, measure the effectiveness of a future ad campaign, or gauge the popularity of certain themed dice once I offer in-app purchases. The Firebase dashboard is also only one view into my data. I can open the Google Analytics dashboard or even run complicated queries against all of my data using BigQuery, depending on my needs and expertise. But those are all subjects for another video. Until then, check out the documentation here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel. Let me know what you want to hear me talk about next, either in the comments below or at Puxor on the Twitter. So long and have a wonderful time. <laughs>